Hello YouTube, I've got uh, a loco unboxing today and uh, finally it's my first double gauge loco of uh, 2020 and as you can see it's the new DAPL LSWR so it's London and South Western Railway B4 class locomotive and um, I went for Guernsey um, in the dark green livery and um, I believe it was on Southampton Dock, so it's nowhere near the northwest, but it doesn't matter. So um, here's the box. Uh, first negative point, it looks like it's been bashed around a bit. The corners of the box have had a few um, bumps on them, a few scuffs, but uh, hopefully all inside's all right. Um, I did actually have one of these before. About when you first bought them out about two years ago, I had the British Railway Lake Crest livery. Um, and it was great, worked well, uh, but unfortunately, um, I turned it on one day and it just had no life in it whatsoever. So when I took it back to Hattons, unfortunately, they were completely out of stock. So I had to just settle for a refund. So I thought I'd give it another go with this new one. Um, so the first thing I take out of the box now is this uh, little information booklet. And it looks quite substantial actually A table of contents so we've got basically running in first use coupling removing the body fitting the dc decoder blah 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 so for someone like me who's uh not very good with stuff like this it's uh very helpful that's the uh removing the body and presumably taking the loco apart if needed yeah, it's quite a good little booklet worth keeping. There's the parts list. So it's quite uh, it's quite interesting to see what the loco's made of and how it's all assembled. And it's good as well that they do it all in different colours so it highlights all the parts more for you. Um what's this here? So that's all your list of parts. So I don't really recall getting something in that much in depth about a loco in terms of um, an owner's manual, so that's pretty good. So put that to one side. We have the outer layer of foam. And there it is. Let's take it out. The rest of the box so it, even though the box has been bashed around i would have thought this should be perfectly safe inside i'm not too worried about the box really because it probably never go back in the box then it all goes well the only accessories you seem to get with this is uh these wider couplers and uh, anyone wants to correct me i haven't looked at the manual at all yet but i presume that's maybe for sharp points or something like that possibly but yeah I'll have a look at that later. Let's, uh, let's get this open. Look at that. I was tempted by the bright yellow one, but I thought it st stood out a bit too much for me. But I really like this one, and I like the, uh, the look of the cab on this one. That's pretty stunning, that, isn't it? Just take a look at the... Yeah, got sprung buffers. Um, it's not the heaviest engine in the world, so it's all plastic, I think, pretty much. But look at the uh, look at the detail on it. They're all individual parts. So I think that's quite a nice looking loco that, and uh, sort of thing you see on heritage lines. So look at that interior cab detail. I suppose a good thing about it being an open cab. Sorry, I can't really get it in focus. There we go. Think about it being an open cab, you can see a lot more of the inside. I think that looks uh, pretty good, that. Amazing the amount of detail on it. So I'll just see if we get it in focus again. Yeah, it's great. I'm happy with it. And they're, yeah, they're all like individual pieces, they're not uh, just painted on like you see a lot of the time. 
I'm having a hard time keeping it in focus really to be honest. I don't know why. Just see we can uh, there we go. Yeah, certain light it doesn't like. But it's uh There we go. Yeah, I don't know why the uh, focus is so bad today. It must be to do with the lights, but yeah. We're going to get this on the layout and um, we'll do a little bit of a running session with it. So um, let's see how she gets on. Right, we have her on the uh, the layout. And um, I didn't mention earlier, I got the DCC fitted version. So it uh, has a working uh, fire fricker as well. So a uh, nice little extra feature. Um, just want to do a little quick... Um, Bit of info about the loco that I looked up on the internet. Um, there was a total of 25 of these built. I think there was two slightly different variations of themselves. Um, and they were basically made for station piloting or um, dock shunting. I think dock shunting was the main one. And uh, I know they were replaced in uh, 1947 mainly by uh, the USA class loco. Um, I think Bachman had done a model for them for Model Rail magazine. Um, I think a lot of them were sold for industrial use after that. And the uh, the last one was withdrawn from service in uh, 1963. And I know two examples are in preservation. Unfortunately, the, uh, both of them are um, only static at the moment. One's at the Bluebell Railway. The other one's at uh, Bressingham Steam Museum. Uh, both places I haven't been able to visit yet, so hopefully one day after, after the lockdown's over, you never know. Um, but anyway, we'll just um, see how she goes. We'll just see if we can start her off slowly. Uh, I've addressed it as number three. So we'll just put it on uh, speed step two. That started off quite nice, we'll just do it in reverse. So that's uh, speed step two on the uh, Gage Master Prodigy controller. I think that's uh, a very good start. Oh, it, has, uh, it has stopped. I'll up it to number three. Well, bear in mind it hasn't been running yet. It does say it doesn't need a uh, running in, but I think um, it's always best uh, give them a good run. But yeah, so far so good. It is making a little bit of a noise. Um, I'll just stop it there. You can just about see the uh, fire flicker effect. It's um, I think it's more of a novelty than uh, than anything because you can't really see it unless you look really closely. But it's a nice little feature. I'm uh, I'm gonna give it a good running now, and then um, we'll put some coaches and some wagons behind it and do a bit of a running session. As we can see, uh, she's managing a free car train all right. These coaches are quite heavy as well, so it's not too bad. I think mean, the uh, last model I had, I tried it with five Mark 1 coaches and it just about pulled them at a struggle, but I think three, maybe four maximum would be the capacity for this loco. And uh, I know they're not authentically the right coaches, but. Uh, I thought it'd go quite nice with them. Something you might see on a heritage railway. Right, we have her now pulling a uh, goods train. Quite a good size and it's managing it fine. Just want to show how she uh, runs on um, Insel Frog Points, which is what some of the uh, small locos struggle with. And this um, engine seems to cope with them just fine. Hornby and Pico. See how she goes over this one.
The one I had last time did struggle with um, the Hornby Express points, but it's never going to run on my uh, main line anyway, so that's not a problem. And uh, if I went back in time, I wouldn't have used them. You see, we get a close up of the uh, fire, fire uh, scene. There she is. Again, it's not very noticeable, but you can just about make out the fire in the cab. But yeah, I'm pretty impressed with it. Runs well. I've uh, ran it round the layout six times for, uh, forwards and backwards, and um, it did get a bit quieter. Right, that concludes the running session for this lovely little loco. The only um, markdown I'd say on detail and possibly performance is, although it runs smoothly, is that these rods here are only made out of plastic and they do actually look quite plasticky. If we zoom in closer, it's quite obvious. I know the Hattons and the Barclays are plastic, but they're slightly um, more metal looking from the way they've been um, painted or coloured. But Overall, I can't really uh, fault it. I can't really, I'm um, not qualified enough to explain about how accurately detailed it is, but I think um, just from looking at it, it's a stunning looking loco. And I think uh, all the detail in that cab makes a difference. And uh, I'll definitely be interested in getting a driver and fireman in there, seeing as there's plenty of space for one. So, um, yeah, makes a nice addition to the Heritage line. And, uh, it's uh, it's got a reason why it's a pulling power. I mean, you'd never expect it to pull more than a couple of coaches, I would have thought, in real life, anyway. So, um, in on a heritage line, anyway. So, um, very happy with this logo, and um, I've also got the Helgen Class Thirty Threes on the way. Um, DRS. The, um, I've had them sent straight to the person to DCC sound fit them for me so um hopefully they'll be on the next running session soon and uh we'll uh see how they turn out so um thanks for watching and uh take a look at me other unboxing videos uh like and subscribe thanks again